Say again the title of the Schaffer's book. It's the production of commodities by means of commodities. What does that mean? <laughs> what we'll get here is that, that you need to produce commodities to produce commodities. You need inputs and outputs, which is something else that I haven't mentioned, by the way, that came out of this, which is the whole notion of input-output analysis, which is associated with Leontief. Now, again, uh, Leontief was, a, was a, a, a Russian who came to, uh, is it two Fs or one F? Oh, well, you figure it out. Um, Vasily, Vasily Leontief. Uh, now, what, what uh, Leontief did uh, was to take over some of these ideas in Russian planning, I mentioned Feldman and so on, and say, well, actually, one of the ways in which you could uh, conceptualize economy would be like this. Uh, you form a matrix of some kind, and you have an entry here. And you say, okay, you produce steel, and you have a long kind of column like this like over here. And at the end of it, you get the total amount of steel produced. You add up all of the steel. Now, let's say it's just tons, physical tons at the moment. And you then you ask the question, how much steel goes into a sector called transport equipment? Okay, so you have a sector here. And you say, how many, and you enter a number here of some kind, which is the amount of steel that needs to go into the transport sector. Then you say, the amount of steel that needs to go into construction. Okay? And you end up with another number. And so you keep on going over across all of the sectors in the economy over here, and you end up with something like this and you add up all of these steel going to all of these, so this is where the steel is going. Now one of these will be steel. How much steel do you need to produce steel? And sometimes you do need steel, and this is going to come up in here. So there will be an even entry here. Some of these spots will be empty. No steel is needed to produce this. Uh, but when you take steel here, then actually as you, as, as, you, as you take all of the sectors over here, so you'll have transport here, and you say, well, how much transport do you need to produce steel? How much construction do you need? How much uh, iron ore do you need? And you end up, so you end up with a matrix of this kind. Right? And this is an input-output matrix. And what's very interesting about this is let's suppose you decided you wanted to expand steel production, okay? And you said, all right, our aim is to increase uh, the output of steel. Uh, this is the... And, and we want to increase this. Well, we're going to have to increase all of these inputs by so much. Where, where, the, when it's, where it's empty, you don't have to do anything. But if you're, if you're doing central planning, you kind of say, all right, we want to double steel production in five years. How much more iron ore do we need? How much more coal do we need? How much energy, extra energy do we need? And we can actually use this, and we end up with a set of coefficients here, which are mathematical coefficients, and we can then simply calculate how much of anything we particularly need if we want to double the output of steel, or we want to double the output of automobiles, or, 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 or something like that. So this is what we call an input-output table. And it can be used in this, and this is what we, is really meant by the production of commodities by means of commodities. That you can only produce steel by taking a whole bunch of commodities and putting it into steel production. You can only create, you can only produce transport equipment if you take a lot of commodities and put it into transport equipment. So Leontier, this takes off from Marx's matrix as well. As you can see what the connection is. Uh, so, so input output, and this by the way is now, is still the framework of national accounting. And you could use this for planning all sorts of things, like uh, it was being used at the end of the 1960s by several people, for instance, who were interested in the question, let's suppose you halved the defense budget, right? What would be the impact? So you could find how much steel would be reduced, etc., 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 by halving the defense budget. 
what you could then do is to say, all right, let's suppose we halve the defense budget and we double the budget for uh, hospitals and universities. Yay, that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> all right, and then you could see what would mop up all of the resources which have been lost by closing down the steel or, or closing down the defense industries or, or, or seriously curving them back. So there's a lot of planning. Uh, which uses techniques of this kind, and it was very heavily used in the 1960s, 1970s. Now, since then, of course, nobody likes to plan anything anymore, but uh, the, the point is that, that under social democracies and, and, and actually planning interventions, these were the sorts of techniques that were frequently appealed to. And, and you could see, you could then set it up as a dynamic growth model and do all kinds of things with it. And with computers, uh, of course, uh, some of the initial computer modeling done of national economies was done in this kind of way, and it is still the basis of a lot of national accounts. So input-output structures are actually very important. Again, it comes from, from, from all of this.